Oil prices slip after the symbolic OPEC plus output cut and ADCB in talks to sell $1.1 billion of bad debt. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Farhan. Oil prices slipped this morning, pairing the previous session's 3% gain as an OPEC plus deal to cut output by 100,000 barrels per day in October was seen as a largely symbolic move to stem the market's recent slide. Brent crude futures traded around $95 a barrel this morning and West Texas futures were at $89 a barrel. OPEC Plus decided to reverse a 100,000 barrel per day increase for September after Saudi and other members voiced concern about the slump in prices since June despite tight supply. The total value of real estate and infrastructure projects since the launch of Saudi Vision 2030 in 2016 has crossed $1.1 trillion. That's according to Knight Frank, who say with 555,000 residential units, 275,000 hotel rooms and 10.4 million square kilometers of retail and office space expected by 2030, Saudi will be the largest construction site the world has ever known. Saudi has 15 giga projects in various phases of construction, many of which are new standalone super cities in their own right. ADCB is in talks to sell $1.1 billion of bad debt after being exposed to a series of corporate defaults, including NMC Health and Arab Tech, codenamed Project Turbo, according to Bloomberg. ADCB has begun the process of selling the claims that are mainly secured by personal and corporate guarantees and real estate assets. The sale aims to declutter the balance sheet and free up scarce management resources. It would also help the bank avoid spending on legal cases. Credit Suisse will expand in Qatar via a partnership with its investment promotion agency. Officials say it will strengthen the bank's wealth management business, deepen its local footprint and contribute to accelerating its development and digitization in Qatar and the wider region. The move comes as Credit Suisse is reportedly considering cutting around 5,000 jobs, about one position in 10, as part of a cost reduction drive. Russia raked in a whopping $158 billion in energy exports in the six months following its invasion of Ukraine, with the EU accounting for more than half. That's according to the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air. It called for more effective sanctions after the war sent oil, gas and coal prices soaring. It says surging prices mean Russia's revenue is far above previous year's levels, despite less exports. Natural gas prices are at record levels in Europe, while crude prices have dropped. Honda has formed a partnership with trading company Hanwaco to secure a stable supply of metals used in batteries for EVs. Honda will be able to obtain essential metals like nickel, cobalt and lithium through the partnership in the medium to long term. Procuring these elements is among many challenges for automakers worldwide as stricter environmental regulations accelerate EV production and sales. Honda plans to roll out 30 EV models globally and produce more than 2 million EVs a year by 2030. Companies in G7 economies are failing to meet Paris Climate Agreement objectives based on current corporate pledges to cut emissions. That's according to CDP and Oliver Wyman. Under the global 2015 Paris deal, countries agreed to cut greenhouse gas emissions fast enough to limit global warming to 2 degrees Celsius and aim to keep the rise below 1.5 degrees Celsius, which scientists say would avert some of the worst effects. But across the G7 countries, corporate emissions targets are overall on a 2.7 degrees Celsius warming trajectory. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.